Now the next one, I don't know if you've heard before, is number 477. It's not a commonly heard or sung song, but it's one of my favorites. It's Come Ye Disconsolate, number 477. And I love this song because of the last words. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. And then the next one, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot cure. And then the third one, earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot remove. Number 477, come ye disconsolate. We're going to be doing another song. <laughs> Number 476, just the next page over or back. It's Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Number 476, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Days are filled with sorrow are lonely and dreary, burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near, burdens are lifted at Calvary, 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 burdens are lifted at Calvary. Oh, <laughs> 
Good morning and happy Sabbath. So glad to be with you today on a beautiful, sunny Sabbath day. And we want to welcome those who are joining us uh, online and want to greet you as well. We're thankful for a special Sabbath day today. We are going to witness a commitment through baptism by our dear sister Alicia. So we're looking forward to that in just a few moments. But first, we do have a few announcements. So I'm going to ask, uh, well, I should ask first, was there another feature that I'm missing? Or are we ready to come right into the announcements? Did I miss a feature? No? Oh, yes, that's what it is. It's a, it's a, oh, I know what it is. We are not going to have that feature because the person who is going to share it is ill today. Thank you for reminding me. All right, so what we're going to do is go right into our announcements. And I guess, Beth, if you would like to come forward. And then Tracy, wherever Tracy has gone to, she can give the next announcement. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. Last week I shared with you that we are going to be partnering with pretty much every ministry in the church to move forward this year in our um, health initiative, if you, if you will. And um, we, we are really excited about it. Um, I have coming to you an announcement that includes my email address. I've asked that you prayerfully consider presenting something to us as a church. It doesn't have to be a complicated recipe. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, a, 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 I'm trying to think of a famous chef. I can't think of one right now. Gordon Ramsay, thank you. Gordon Ramsay um, dish and, and demonstration. It just has to be something that you know you struggled with that has helped you getting quick meals, quick healthy meals on the table, how to shop for stuff and keep it fresh, how to make good healthy bread. You know, you're hearing more and more about the chemicals and the, and the other things that are in our foods and we need to be aware of that. We wanna move away from that. So in that announcement, will, my, my email address will be there. Give me, give me what you wanna do and give me when you might be available to do that, and we'll work from there. So thank you for prayerfully considering that. Thank you. I, a question? No. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, a quick update. In your bulletin, a social event is noted for February 10th. But the time is incorrect. It's listed as 4.30. We actually, and that's, the, the bulletin team was correct. We initially said we would start at 4.30, um, but we met this week, and we we're actually going to start the relationship seminar at 3.30 on, um, is that right? Do I have that right? I think it's 3.30 to 5, right? And then we have a break, and we start the social at 5.30. Pastor and I are like, what? We were both there. Richard, do you, I think we said 3.30, right? Richard's keeping me honest. Yes, 3.30 to start the relationship seminar with Dr. Zeno. And then um, that'll go roughly till around 5, and then we'll have a short break, and we'll start our social at 5.30. Um, I will get information out this week around signing up and the flyer so that you can share it with your friends to invite them, but we'll be having games. Um, and the fun thing we're doing with the food is... We're encouraging you to bring something that starts with the same letter of your last name. So I'm Williams, I might bring like water chestnuts, which would not be fun for anyone. But you know, um, that, so that just kind of some ideas of things you can think of. So February 10th, uh, 3.30 for the relationship seminar, 5.30 for the social. Thank you, Tracy. Um, just a couple other items to note in your bulletin. Uh, we have a first reading that you will want to note for membership transfer uh, for Anna Bustamante from Baltimore Spanish SDA Church and Daniel Merrill from Beltsville SDA Church, each to Tridelphia. So we will have a second reading and a vote uh, either next Sabbath or the following. Uh, also want to point out that tomorrow, the Adventurers and Pathfinders have their annual ice skating party. And there is a, an announcement 
here about Bible study training on February 3. I'd like to make a correction there. We will be having Bible study training on February 17 and 24. There will be two Sabbaths of Bible study training. Um, let me just tell you that if you thought that you needed to have the spiritual gift of teaching to give a Bible study, you were incorrect. You don't need the spiritual gift of teaching to give a Bible study. It's much simpler than that. You just need to be willing and to, and to be friendly or to be willing to be friendly. And uh, so please come and learn February 17 and 24. This is when we'll have our Bible study training. Now, as I've been seated here, wouldn't you know it, uh, Janeth Partika, one of our members, has been texting me. Uh, she was, had a migraine this morning, was unable to be here. She was the one who was to give the personal ministries spotlight. And she says, Pastor, it's in a video. It's ready. It's ready. So I'm wondering now if you have the video ready that she prepared. Okay, now the sound booth is telling me no. We do not have the video. So I'm sorry, Janeth. Um, we will put you on a different Sabbath, and you can share this testimony with them. All right, so finally, I would just like to uh, encourage you to join us for fellowship lunch. Today, immediately following the service, we really want you to feel welcomed, especially if you're visiting with us today. Are we glad that you are here? And pray that God will bless you today uh, for the time you spent in worship with us. Now, at this time, I'd like to turn to our call to worship, found in Psalm 80. Psalm 80, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 3. Psalm 80, verses 1 through 3. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. You who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come and save us. Restore us, O God. Cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. Now I'd like to invite you uh, to, if you can, uh, kneel where you are, and let's approach God with our hearts humbled in prayer. Heavenly Father, we bow humbly before you this morning here in your sanctuary, thankful, Lord, to be in your house on this, your holy Sabbath. We're so grateful for the way that you have led us in this past week, that you have awakened us every morning, that you have given us health, that you have given us families, that you've given us a church family. Each day, Lord, is a reminder of your faithfulness. And we just want to praise you, Father, and thank you for your goodness toward each one of us. As we studied in Sabbath school this morning, you are always on our side. And we are grateful, Lord, that we have you as a refuge and a safe place where we can take all our burdens and where we can find help and hope in every situation. Father, we thank you for the many and diverse members of our congregation, and we just want to lift up to you the burdens that we carry on our hearts. There are some who are on our list, Lord. We pray for the health of those who are in need of healing and strength. We pray for the encouragement of those who are grieving and need to be upheld by your strong right hand. We, need, we pray, Lord, for the empowerment of those who are actively witnessing and sharing Bible studies and, and seeking to make disciples as you have asked us to do. And Lord, we pray for those who are seeking, those who need to make a decision to follow you, 
but who are wrestling. And we pray, Lord, that you would put a hedge around them, that you would stop and thwart the plans of the enemy and cause these to make a decision to follow you. And we're excited today, Lord, that we have a celebration of our dear sister Alicia, who has made a decision for baptism. And today we will celebrate that decision, but it will not just be us, but all heaven, we know from Scripture, will be rejoicing today. And so we thank you for Alicia. We pray that her commitment would be the means of reminding each one of us of our need to commit our hearts and lives to you. And so please, Father, bless this day in a special way with an outpouring of the Spirit of God. May every person in this place and watching online know and experience the presence of God from the time we spend today in worship. This is our prayer, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Stand with me, if you could stand with me, please, and turn to number 337, Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it, number 337. seated. Well, it's not every week in the life of a congregation that we get to celebrate uh, a baptism, but today is one of those days. So we're so grateful for Alicia and her commitment. I'd like to invite Alicia Chen to please come up and join me in the front. And I'm going to let you hold this. And I also just, I'm sure that Pastor may want to say something also, but I believe that Alicia has some family here. I wonder if you could stand, just stand so that we can see you are. Ricky, get your family, yes. <laughs> Wonderful, we are so grateful that Alicia's parents are here. And of course, Ricky and Valeria and the family are here. Thank you so much for being here on this special day. Okay. You have friends here too? Where are they? If you have uh, friends and coworkers or anyone else, please stand. 
Yes, we want you to stand up. I'm so sorry. Oh, wonderful. Thank you for joining. We're so glad that you could be with us today. Thank you. Well, um, we're all your friends, Alicia. Alicia's been here a little while, and this day is one that we have all looked forward to, and, uh, and so we're grateful. Alicia, what we're going to do is start by um, taking a few moments to allow you to express to the congregation your affirmation of the baptismal commitment. Uh, there are 13 ba baptismal vows, which are statements of commitment. does not mean that Alicia is perfect, but she is making a commitment today. It doesn't mean she'll never stumble, but it does mean that she's on the right path and she's made a decision to follow Jesus. And so we're going to go through these vows together. I'm going to ask the questions. Thank you, Elder. We've been being attacked by some bugs here um, this morning. Thank you, Elder. So we will uh, go through these questions. I think you know the answers as we rehearse them. Um, and then at the conclusion of each of these vows, I'm going to turn to you to ask, for those of you who are members of the church and you've made this commitment in times past, if you would affirm that commitment, reaffirm that commitment with a hearty amen. Okay, thank you. All right. Are you ready, Alicia? Yes. Do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity of three co-eternal persons? Yes. Congregation? Yes. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Yes. Amen. Congregation? Yes. I wonder if there's another microphone so that I wouldn't have to hunch over this. Can I borrow that one? Thank you. Number three, do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart, and do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Yes. Amen. Congregation. Amen. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ, your intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary, and accept His promise of transforming grace and power to live a loving, Christ-centered life in your home and before the world. Yes. Amen. Congregation. Amen. Do you believe, this is an important one, that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Yes. Amen. Congregation. Amen. Amen. This is a time of revival for the church. Do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of His will? And is it your purpose by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the Fourth Commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath of the Lord and the memorial of creation? Yes. Amen. Congregation, we praise the Lord for the Sabbath. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal shall put on immortality? And as you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to His loving salvation by using your talents, which are many, we might add, in personal soul-winning endeavor to help others to be ready for His glorious appearing? Yes. Amen. Congregation, Amen. you know the Christian life is a life of prayer, Bible study, and witness. And these are what give life to the Christian experience. Number eight, do you accept the biblical teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church. Yes. Amen. Congregation, Amen. we're thankful for this last day gift in a special sense in the last days. Number nine, do you believe in church organization? And is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through your tithes and offerings and by your personal effort and influence? Yes. Amen. Congregation, Amen. Amen. We're thankful for the tithes and offerings that we, uh, that we give and recognize that in the Seventh-day Adventist church, it does not make Pastor Sam rich. <laughs> but instead, it's given in a fair and equal way to all the ministers so that there is uh, able to be humility even amongst the clergy. All right. Number 10. Do you believe that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? And will you honor God by caring for it? Avoiding the use of that which is harmful and abstaining from all unclean foods, from the use, manufacture, or sale of alcoholic beverages, the use, manufacture, or sale of tobacco in any of its forms for human consumption, and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs. Yes. Amen. Congregation. Are you glad you didn't have to say that? 
That's a lot of mouthful. Uh, you know, Seventh-day Adventists are so thankful that this message of just a simple lifestyle that avoids harmful uh, narcotics and alcohol, etc., enables us to live seven to ten years longer than much of the population. Isn't that an awesome thing? We're grateful for a, a healthy lifestyle that seems to have uh, worked well uh, for many years in Loma Linda and other places, leading to many lifelong Adventists who even reach the age of 100. Do you know and understand the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you purpose by the grace of God to fulfill His will by ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Yes. Amen. Congregation. Amen. Amen. Do you accept the New Testament teaching of baptism by immersion and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and His forgiveness of your sins? Yes. Amen. Can you say amen, congregation? <laughs> and finally, and lastly, do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship? And do you desire to become a member of this local congregation of the World Church? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. What do you say, congregation? <laughs> Amen. Well, we're so grateful, uh, Alicia, to hear of this affirmation. And, you know, it's one thing to hear these uh, established beliefs of the Bible being affirmed, but it's even more special to hear a personal word from Alicia. So we're going to give you an opportunity to share just a little bit of your journey and why you're making the decision that you're making today, and we're glad to invite you to share from the front. Thank you. Hello. If we can turn them. Is this one on? Okay. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, happy Sabbath. Thank you for um, listening <laughs> and being here. It's funny how uh, terror and excitement feel like the same thing. Um, I, you know, Pastor Sam and Pastor Jim have been with me in this journey and have given me some ideas on what to say. And I would say that the terror actually has come from me praying on not speaking for too long. Um, and the excitement is the baptism itself. I, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, thank you. So um, thank you for asking me to speak. Um, I, you know, those of you who don't know me, or maybe you do know me, I just wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a, a snapshot of who I am, um, I, and I'm going to try to stick to the not getting pulled off with a hook. Um, I, I'm what you refer to as an ABC, an American-born Chinese. So my parents are immigrants. They come from the beautiful country of Taiwan, so, <laughs> but I'm not an ABT, it's still called an ABC. So um, I was born and raised in the state of um, Texas, so from Tyler, Texas, you know, we'll talk in a country drawl. And, you know, grew up there, had a really nice childhood, moved to Maryland and had my adolescence and have been here since then. And, uh, you know, I would say it was such a beautiful life. And somewhere along the way, uh, I got caught up with the world. And I, it, it's kind of a slippery slope. You know, it's, you think you're making decisions, you're having fun, I'm going to go with my friends to this place, and then I'm going to become a licensed mixologist because this is also fun. And these decisions just took me down a path that suddenly, bad things started happening to me and I didn't know how, how it had happened. It seemed to just um, happen so quickly until one day I was in court in front of a judge telling him that I was guilty for reckless driving and uh, I thought, you know, the judge is going to give me a moment. He's going to ask me, hey, uh, explain yourself. I'm sure something um, happened that day that was unusual, and I was going to say, yes, indeed. I was two hours late to pick up my friend who was very upset, and I was rushing, and that's why I was driving fast. But of course, the judge never did that. And I was sentenced guilty, and I was terrified. At the time, I was a fourth year in pharmacy school. I was getting ready to take my board exams, and I 
didn't know what would happen. Actually, in my mind, I knew what would happen. I knew that this misdemeanor would be on my record for my life. I would, my, you know, my life would be jeopardized. All, everything I had worked for up to that time would go away. So I got a lawyer and I said, okay, the lawyer is going to make it go away. And I just remember having the conversation with him and at the end he said, you could do everything right. I can tell you what to do and you can do it. But I'm gonna tell you, there's no guarantee that the outcome will be what you want it to be. And I, that was the moment. <laughs> All of this time God had put me, allowed me to have these different trials and it was really that one that where I felt zero control and I just remember sitting in the car after the meeting and just feeling numb and I was baffled. I had finally utterly lost control of maybe the single most important outcome of my life and I was terrified. Um, fortunately, I was in that fourth year program, I was on an internship with a friend, and Nancy, I hope she's watching on YouTube today from Texas, she told me uh, constantly, not because I had gone through this, but just because she was constantly saying how great God was. She said, I got hit by a, my car, parked car got hit by another car, and it was... Um, Praise the Lord because they left their insurance information and that way I could contact them and get the car fixed. That was God's doing. And I was like, that doesn't happen to anybody. So it had to have been God. So I went back to her and I said, can you tell me about God? And she did. And so, um, you know, over the years I was studying, was married and we looked for churches and Going through the different churches, I didn't feel kind of the homecoming that I felt when we came to Triladelphia. It was strange um, because I didn't know that that was something we could expect. We went to a few churches, that everybody was friendly, you know, great, and that's what I thought was normal. And we came here and people recognized that we were new. They wanted to get to know us and they were genuine about it. And that was the first time I said, wow, I have a family and, and God. And um, so that was very, such a blessing. And um, so we've been here, coming here since 2020. And um, we started studying. Thankfully, pastor came and asked if we wanted to join Bible studies. And in the Landmarks of Prophecy, there was one lesson on baptism. And it wasn't until then, I had heard the word, I knew about it. It wasn't until then that I understood what baptism meant and what it required. Because I said I want to, but it seems too easy to do it. Like, all I have to do is just pronounce and jump into some water. But actually, with that lesson, it taught us that, no, you actually need to understand what you're getting yourself into. You need to read the Bible. You need to understand the Bible. And so I took the time. I said, okay, I'm willing to wait. I'm willing to learn. Um, learned about the Seventh-day Adventist Church and it's, you know, how it links the body and health to the worship. And it makes so much sense. You know, we can't worship well unless we're feeling well, you know, mentally, physically, and just the way that it's encouraged that we eat well and just take care of our bodies is just really amazing in this church. And I am so glad to be a part of it. And um, so I just want to thank you. I don't know if I addressed all the things that I wanted to, but I wanted to thank all of you, whether any of you knew it or not, just the fact, your smiles, your kindness, all of you here, just everything that we've come, you know, every day that we've come to the church, I've just felt the love and I'm so appreciative of you helping me in this journey to the baptism. Um, so, and the last thing I think I wanted to close with is, um, you know, when you have God, it's just beautiful. It is amazing, and the music is unlike no other. Thank you, Ruthie, for the songs and everybody who sings here together, and there's nothing like it. You know, you can have rock music, you can have Imagine Dragons, sorry kids, but, <laughs> but it's beautiful, but something about worship music is just, you feel it in your body. Um, so, you know, I, I would say now that I have God, when we drive and see the sunset every day, and I 
try not to look away too long, but um, for last night, for example, we were driving and I said, boys, look, have you ever seen a pink sky behind white clouds with blue streaks up there? Every sunset is different. And, and I said, that's where the inspiration for cotton candy came from. Yeah, the blue and pink. And, and Liam, our oldest son, said, that's right, the clouds. And I was like, yeah, true, the clouds. Um, so I would say with God, um, with this reading that I've been doing and everything and all of you, I have wisdom, I have hope, I have courage and strength, I have encouragement, I know I have abundant, unfailing, unconditional love because I have God. Thank you. Alicia, thank you. And we're all so happy for her, amen? Um, I want to just share again a little bit about what we as as Seventh-day Adventist Christians believe on baptism. By baptism, we confess our faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and testify of our death to sin and our purpose to walk in newness of life. There's a text that I would like to read also from Romans chapter 6. What shall we then, what shall we say then? This is verse 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Verse 3. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And I want to read this as a promise. Amen? God wants to give us that newness of life. And every day, we will have challenges and struggles, and it will get difficult. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus and we walk with him every day, it will make the biggest difference in each one of our lives. Okay? Well, you have heard from Alicia, and now, uh, to make this official, we would like to receive her uh, into the membership of the Triadelphia Seventh-day Adventist Church. So at this point, I'd like to invite any uh, member who would like to make a motion that we receive Alicia into membership of the church pending her going down into the waters of baptism behind me in just a few moments. I saw a motion and I saw a second. Now, if you are in favor, raise your hand and say amen. 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 And if you are opposed, do the same. And we thank you for your silence. You are welcome, Alicia. And now we need to make this official, so I would like to Uh, ask Pastor Sam and Alicia to make their way to the baptistry and just remind you that uh, when you leave today we are going to make sure that Alicia is in the receiving line with the pastor so that you can greet Alicia, give her a hug, a handshake, whatever you would like, um, encouraging words and welcome her officially and we also will have uh, a book There's a book that's going to be open flat out in the foyer that has blank pages where you can just write your name, maybe a Bible text, an encouraging word, something, just something that she'll be able to keep forever and always look back and be able to see the encouragement she received from her church family on the day of her baptism. So at this time, we will pause for the baptism.
Okay, we're gonna open our hymnals to 248, which happens to also be a song that Alicia chose, and I believe it might be one of her favorites, I'm not sure, but um, she asked for this song to be sung, so we're gonna sing it. A number 248, oh, how I love Jesus. her family as they continue to walk in your ways. So as a minister of the gospel, it is for me a great privilege to baptize Alicia Chen in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Would it be okay to say how happy we are by raising our hands? Amen? And for this decision. And for anyone who has still not made this decision to follow Jesus, we want to encourage you. We want to invite you to study, to learn more about him. He's real, and he's coming soon. Amen? While the piano and organ are playing, let's sing the chorus of that fantastic hymn, 248. Okay, let's sing it together. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. What a 
privilege to proclaim that we love Jesus. And that's the opportunity for each of us. What a wonderful baptism of Elisha and her testimony. How impacting for all of us. And we're so grateful her family and others are here with us today. This is the beginning of a new life for Elisha and for each of us. In the vows that Elisha agreed to and we affirmed, there was a section in there about the return of tithe and giving of offerings. And right now we have that wonderful privilege to be able to do that in our service. I want to thank you for your faithfulness. We had our year-end report. We praise God for what he has done through you for Triadelphia Church and for the World Church. I don't want you to forget Hope Rising. Those of you who still need to make a decision, kindly do that as the Lord impresses you. But today, the offering specifically is for Chesapeake Advance, activities having to do with our local conference, the Chesapeake Conference. In Psalm chapter 20, verse 7, it says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Now let me paraphrase it just a little bit. Some trust in the stock market <laughs> or some in certificates of deposit and treasury bonds. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen? Amen? So what a privilege it is for each of us to participate in the offering. Just before we do that, this morning on the, in this false day of spring, I was out on a long walk. And while I'm walking, I listen to the Bible and to the spirit of prophecy. I'm in the latter part of volume six now. It really caught my attention. Let me share it with you. It is a heaven appointed plan that men should return to the Lord his own. And this is so plainly stated that men and women have no excuse for misunderstanding or evading the duties and responsibilities God has laid upon them. Those who claim that they cannot see this to be their duty reveal to the heavenly universe, to the church, and to the world that they do not want to see this plainly stated requirement to return our tithe. It's not even ours, it's God's. And then to give free will offerings. God pledges himself to bless those who obey his commandments. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that beautiful section in Malachi chapter 3 and verses 10 to 12. Then it says this, with these words of light and truth before them, how dare men neglect so plain a duty? How dare they disobey God when obedience to his requirements means his blessing, listen to this, in both temporal and spiritual things. And disobedience means the curse of God. Satan is the destroyer. God cannot bless those who refuse to be faithful stewards. All he can do is to permit Satan to accomplish his destroying work. We see calamities of every kind and every degree coming upon the earth, and why? And they are more frequent, and they will become more frequent, I'll tell you. The Lord's restraining power is not exercised. The world has disregarded the word of God. They live as though there were no God. Today and into the future, because maybe today you are not prepared. A wonderful plan God has given to us to show our trust in him, not in horses or chariots, but in him, by returning to him a faithful tithe and our free will offerings. Our deacons will stand now, we'll have prayer, and you can participate. Dear Lord, bless in a wonderful way as your people faithfully here at Tridelphia Return tithe and give offerings, not because they have to, but because they love you and want to receive your blessings. 
We thank you for the test that you place before each of us. We thank you for the magnificent and wonderful testimony of Alicia today and her baptism. Now, Lord, bless each one as we participate in returning to you that which is yours and giving of our free will offerings. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. give online. Nancy and I have done that for about the last 15 years. The only problem with that, you feel a little empty when the plate comes around. So you put something in, you know, but be faithful. Electronically is great. Physical, physical placing, great, but be faithful. Right now, we have the opportunity of having a, an additional offering to help our children educationally. And we have a very faithful uh, fund that assists our children when they go to church school. So today, we're going to have children come and collect our offering. And then, the children's story right after that. While the kids are coming up, we're going to sing number 218, When He Cometh. Number 218. Cometh when he cometh to make up his jewels, all his jewels, precious jewels, his loved and his own, like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright ships for All the pure ones, all the bright ones, his loved and his own. Like the stars of the morning, his bright crown adorning, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for his crown. Little children, little children, who love their 
Sabbath. How many of you have ever seen a real alligator? How many of you have ever touched a real alligator? No. How many of you have ever caught a real alligator? Anyone? All right. I'm going to tell you a story today about the time that me and my brother, we caught some alligators. I grew up in Florida, and Florida has lots and lots of alligators. And one Sabbath afternoon, we were going for a walk, and there was kind of like this big berm pathway that the the park service trucks could drive on, and on either side of that, it was swamp. And it had these kind of little bushes that kind of grew, and you have to climb through them. So we're walking, and my brother says, baby alligators. And so we grew up on 68 acres that was surrounded by swamp, and we loved reptiles and any animal we can get our hands on. So we just jumped right in the water. And it was only probably ankle deep. It wasn't very deep. And I reached down, and I grabbed this baby alligator by its back legs, and it turns around like any creature would when some big monster comes and grabs them, bites me in my hand. And so I grab it and I throw it down and I pick it up where you're supposed to grab them by the neck, right behind the head. And so we get that alligator and we catch, you know, I caught him and and we take him back and my parents instantly knew what was up. It was just the youth and, and us going and they were back home. And so we got home and they're like, what's going on? And we're like, what do you mean? And they said, what did you catch? Because they knew we were always out catching stuff. And so we showed them the alligator. And we're expecting them to say, all right, let's go take it back. He shouldn't have caught that. And my dad asks a very interesting question. He says, were there more? And we're like, yeah. And he says, do you want to go back tomorrow and catch some more? And we're like, yeah. So we went to bed. And that, mor- that next morning, we went out and we took some uh, pillowcases. So what you do is, if you catch a snake or an alligator, if your parents allow you to do that, <laughs> you catch them and you put them in the pillowcase and you tie it up and then they're in there and they can breathe through the pillowcase. So we took pillowcases, and we're walking, walking. We passed the spot where we caught them, and we didn't see any alligators. So we kept walking, and there was kind of this lookout balcony there that was built that you could see around the prairie and the swamp, and there was like this pond there with nice, clean water. And we look, and there's a bunch of baby alligators. We hit the jackpot. So my dad and I, I was, I was smaller there, I don't know, I was probably maybe 10 years old, and my brother was 13 or 14, and he goes, he's the more agile one, I'm the more clumsy, cautious one, so my dad and I, we get on the platform, and my brother is down there grabbing alligators and throwing them up to us, we're catching them, we're, put it, we're bagging them. He grabs them, tosses them, we're catching them, we're bagging them. And so we're there for probably 45 minutes, and my brother's on this little little like one-by-one-foot 
piece of grass that's just there on the water. And he's standing there and just grabbing alligators and throwing them up. And suddenly that piece of grass erupts. And guess what was there? Mama. And so my brother's standing there, and this thing erupts, and he falls back onto the land, and he gets up and gets, you know, he was out of there. I mean, he was out of there really fast. And so my dad's like, we're done. Do not tell your mom what happened. And so we made it out of there with 13 alligators. And we kept those alligators in our tub for probably a month, and we would just go out and we would catch stuff in the yard and feed them to them and cockroaches and and it was cool. They all had different little personalities. We got to know them well and then we got to know the law very well and that was a time where alligators were still endangered and it was a hundred thousand dollar fine and ten years in prison per alligator. (laughs) That's a lot of money and a couple lifetimes in prison for my dad, because we were minors, so we were safe. So, what's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is that in life, we can do things, we can choose to do things that are dangerous, or we can choose to do things that are safe. And so we can choose to do things that are dangerous, and sometimes for a while, we can get away with it. And we can be sitting on a little one-by-one piece of grass, and everything seems fun and cool and exciting. But then suddenly, the monster that's beneath Satan who wants to get you there, he's suddenly going to come out, and he's going to try to destroy you. Right? But what do we do if we're ever in a situation like that? We go to solid ground, and that's Jesus who's our rock. And there we find safety in him. Does anyone want to pray? You want to pray? Okay. Dear me, Father, thank you for this day, and please be with us as we we are church in Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Thank you all. You can all go back to your seats. Oh, yes. My dad never went to prison because we promptly did what we should have done in the first place and went and put them back in the river. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to tell you what I think of Jesus since I found in him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely 
He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was filled with misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me, and he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Every day he comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand his words of love. But I'll never know just why he came to save me. Till someday I see his blessed face above. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. Our Sabbath thought for today is found in your bulletin. It comes from Steps to Christ on page 26. Christ is the source of every right impulse. He is the only one that can implant in the heart enmity against sin. Every desire for truth and purity, every conviction of our own sinfulness, is an evidence that his spirit is moving upon our hearts. Amen. Our scripture reading is in Matthew chapter 25. Matthew 25, verse 34. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen. Before we um, go into the sermon, I would like to invite Alicia Chen to please come up and as a church family. And I want to invite also Eunice Kazak, our head deaconess, to please come up. Um, we're all so happy today. Amen? Amen. There's great joy in our church family, and there's great joy in heaven, and we have a few gifts we would like to give her, and I know there are others that are coming that, that will be sharing with you some of their favorite books or some of their favorite thoughts, and, and we have um, some flowers we would like to give you on behalf of our church, and we also have some books that I think you and your kids are going to enjoy. The whole family. So this is a gift where we're the whole family. And we only put a few in here because it will be heavy. We try to put all of them. Um, but, but I know that um, you will see a difference. You'll see a difference. And 
And we're all so happy that she's joining our church family. Amen? Amen. We, we, we know God has plans for you, Alicia, and, and that he will lead you into different ministries and, and he will use the gifts and talents that he has given you. So we're all praying for you and, and we're all here to support. Amen? Amen. That, that's why we're a family. We're here to support, to encourage one another, to pray for one another. So I'll have her give you the flowers first. Okay, and we have these, okay, you can and I have also a, a certificate, baptismal certificate here, and I'll give that to you, you're welcome, thank you, amen, amen. okay, go ahead. I want to thank Brother Kobe Brown for a beautiful rendition of this hymn. Somebody, oh, the pianist, yes, of course, yes. Um, and praise the Lord for, for the gifts and talents that God has given his church, amen? amen. And, and for allowing us to know this amazing person called Jesus who wants to have a relationship with all of us, who wants to lead us to his kingdom, amen? And we are waiting for that to happen very soon. And as I just mentioned, there's great joy in our church family for this beautiful day where we can see a child of God make this decision to follow Jesus. I'm also very grateful today because there's a couple here that are visiting us from California. Pastor Perez and his wife are here, and he pastored for many years at the La Sierra Spanish Church. And it was great joy. I was just in the foyer when he stepped in all of a sudden, and he said, my son told us that you're pastoring here. And so, welcome. Welcome to the Tridelphia Church family. We're all family, amen? We're all family. It does not matter where we come from. We're all family. And there's a beautiful message that Jesus gives to his church for these last days. The Bible talks a lot about the last days. Jesus spoke about the last days right before his crucifixion. In Matthew 24, 25, we've been studying this um, in the gospel, this beautiful message that Jesus gave right before he gave his life on the cross. And we all know that. Right before someone is about to pass away, those words are, are meaningful. Those words that they share with family, with friends, are, are of something important that we should heed to, we should follow, we should listen to. So Jesus is in Jerusalem, and the disciples have questions for him. And one of these questions was, when will you come back? When will these things happen? that you've been talking about, of establishing a new kingdom. And the way Jesus decides to describe or to share this information is through parables. How many of you like stories? We all love stories. Thank you, Josh, for sharing that amazing story. Catching crocodiles, or alligators, actually. <laughs> alligators. That would have not worked in my family at all. <laughs> like the moment I would have brought one of those in, shoo, I was out with the alligator. <laughs> yes. But Jesus tells stories, parables. He illustrates what would happen to his children in the last days. And we went through some of those parables. We, we looked at Matthew 24 and verse um, 45 through 
51. If you want to turn there, you can turn there. They're short, they're easy to read, very clear in the message. And, and the point that Jesus is making here is the importance of faithfulness. What was the point that Jesus was making? Faithfulness, faithful servant. And that is important for God's people in these last days. Chapter 25, we looked at the parable of the wise and foolish virgins. Ten of them that were waiting for the groom to come. And it took them a while to come. All fell asleep. But then five were wise and they had extra oil. They were able to light up their lamps and keep them burning till the very end. And I believe this is a promise again that God gives us here. And the point is, we need to be filled with his Holy Spirit. Amen? And not just today or tomorrow, but all the way until his second coming. We need his Spirit, brothers and sisters. Without his Holy Spirit, we will make bad decisions. But with the Holy Spirit, he will guide us to all that is true. And then the last parable that we studied was the parable of the talents and the importance of investing wisely that we will receive a good return to offer the king or the owner of these talents when he comes back. So the importance of investing in these last days. Chapter 25 ends up with not a parable, but ends up with almost what seems to read as prophecy. In fact, apocalyptic prophecy, that when you read it, it looks like Daniel 7.14. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 25, and verses 31 and onward. And I read, when the Son of Man comes in his glory, the Son of Man makes us reflect on Daniel, Daniel chapter 7. When he comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. Amen? Amen? He will come as King of kings and Lord of lords. He will come with all the authority of the one who rules this universe. What a day that will be. Amen? But Jesus continues saying, all the nations will be gathered before him. And in the Old Testament, in the books of Joel and other books of the Bible, when all the nations are gathered, it is for judgment. It is a solemn occasion. All wars will cease. Amen? It will be a different time. And Jesus here uses a simile. He compares himself to a shepherd. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. Even today, in the Middle East, sometimes shepherds will have both goats and sheep together because they eat different kinds of food. So they graze evenly wherever they go. But at nighttime, when they're coming back home, they need to be separated because you see the goats don't have all that, um, is it um, wool, thank you? All that wool that keeps the sheep warm. They need a little more protection. They need a little more 
um, a, a, a place that protects them from the wind, from the cold. The sheep are okay. But just like a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, Jesus will do the same. And verse 33 tells us, and he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Hmm. One on one side, the other on the other. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, come, you blessed of my father. They're invited into the kingdom. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Is Jesus prepared to receive us? He's ready. In fact, this kingdom has been prepared, has been thought of from the very beginning of the world. And I believe what Jesus does here, he uses this closing statement to tell us the characteristic of people who are faithful, of people who are filled with his spirit, of people who invest well, and I want to probably emphasize more that latter part, who invest well. What is it that we're supposed to invest in? There are many people out there telling us, invest in this. This will make you rich. It will make you money. And you know the companies out there that are growing like there's no tomorrow. Is that what Jesus is talking about? And I think he clearly states here what we are called to do in these last days. And something we should keep in mind is that the same thing that he asks of us, he's asking of the nations. He's asking of all people. This is how God will judge the nations. And that includes you and me. Amen? That includes all of us. And he states here the characteristic of those who will go into his kingdom. And he says, For I was hungry, and you gave me Food. I was thirsty, and you gave me water, drink, yes. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Another word for stranger could be a foreigner, yes. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. I was reading some commentaries, and they shared that God will judge the nations by how they treated his children. how they helped those who were maybe being persecuted because of their faith, how these nations treated his disciples. And what we see here is that they provide basic needs. Amen? Nutrition, 
food, refreshment, water, amen? A place to live, shelter, fellowship through visitation, amen? And those are characteristics that those who will be on his right, those who are called his sheep, show, they exemplify, they share, they take care of others, amen? An important characteristic that is reflected on those who are part of the kingdom of God. I praise God for our Tridelphia Church family. Amen? We're trying, by God's grace, to do these things. Amen? To feed the hungry. Amen? Have you heard of ACS? Yes. Have you participated with ACS? Yes. It's an opportunity for us to share that which we have. Have you participated in our fellowship lunch? Yes? Has it been a blessing? Amen? It's an opportunity, again, to share with food, with water, with fellowship. In fact, it was during fellowship lunch that I met Alicia and Ricky. That was the first time I spoke to them. They were sitting at a table, and I remember being introduced as the pastor at Tridelphia. And one of the first questions Alicia asked me is, what do I need to do to become a member of this church? No one had ever asked me that question the first time I met them. I thought, wow. Praise the Lord. There are people who want to know Jesus. Amen? There are people who want to follow him. There are people who want to imitate him. I praise God for our fellowship ministry. But is there more than we can do as a church family? There is a lot more than we can do. And I praise God once again for the way he uses people to help those who are in need because there are many needs in our world. We might say, wait a second, we're in America, there's plenty of food, there's plenty of water. In fact, water is free. You don't have to, it's in homes and, and in all sorts of places um, where you can just get all that. Clothing, yeah, that, that's also available. I share a story of a student I won't mention names of places or people. But she noticed that one of her classmates was not wearing appropriate clothing for winter. Okay? Probably it was their first time in that area where it's cold, where it snows. And she noticed that they were out and it was raining and then getting colder. And, and it, what she had on was just like, soaking in the rain. It wasn't protecting her at all. So this person spoke with someone else, and they decided to do something. They were going to provide a black raincoat. Why do I say this? Because when this student received that black raincoat, she started crying. Because she said, you know, I asked Jesus for a black raincoat. That's what I specifically asked for. He answered my prayer. She was shocked. Nobody knew about this. One student noticed there was a need, and they went and did something for someone else. 
the student had, you know, snacks, you know, some parents like to send snacks to their kids. Our church likes to send snacks to our students, amen? We, we, we have this ministry where we send snacks, and, 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 and this other student would come in and, and notice, oh, you have a lot of nice goodies there. She's like, oh, yeah, go ahead, you know, you can have some. But she always noticed that she would get two, not just one, but two. And she was like, oh, that's interesting. She found out later she had a little brother who was also in the same school. And they were needing some extra food. You know, those teenagers, they can eat, right? And those young adults can eat too. So, so, so she was actually taking some food for her younger brother. And he was in a similar situation, and they found out, and through, again, contacts, people, that young man was able to receive also a rain jacket and rain boots, amen? He was working outside, doing lawn work, doing, you know, outside work, but didn't have the right clothing. So even in the United States, you have these opportunities, amen, to put into practice some of these things that Jesus invites his disciples to do in these last days. I'm so excited because we as a church just recently started a health partnership where we can talk about these things like water, like food, like exercise. And I've been doing this now for two weeks, and it's been a blessing. Amen? You know, I, I never get thirsty when I come up here. Today, I was super thirsty. <laughs> I've been drinking a lot more water. In fact, I've doubled at least my intake of water. Amen? And so we have opportunities, again, to share, even with those that are around us, that are here. We can share with them the great benefits of good food, good water, and all these things that will help them not only grow physically, but also spiritually. Why did Jesus choose these things? Why, why these elements? And, and I was thinking about it a little bit, and, and you also find these same elements in the book of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah speaks about giving water to the thirsty, giving food to the hungry, taking care of the stranger, of the foreigner. Why, why is this important for Jesus? Why are these his concluding remarks as he looks at these parables of being a faithful servant, of being filled with the Holy Spirit, of investing well in he tells us where, in other people. That's where we invest time, treasures, and talents. And I believe the reason is because this is exactly what Jesus would do if he were here with us today. I want to shortly just share with you a psalm that you all know well, Psalm 23. Psalm 23. A psalm of David, who was a shepherd, who took care of sheep, who knew all that sheep need, and who wrote this psalm many, many years ago almost 3,000 years ago. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He gives me food. He leads me beside the still waters. He gives me water. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of 
righteousness. He covers us with his righteousness. Amen? He tells us the right way to go. All this for his name's sake. And yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. There's fellowship, amen? Even in the most difficult of situations, he's there. He's beside us. He's covering us. Today we studied in the Psalms, right? This idea of God being this covering being who wants to protect us. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with... That's something we need, right? We want oil so we can shine and let the world know that we are followers of Jesus. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord for how long? Forever. We get to go to his home. We get to spend time with him. No longer will anyone be called a stranger. Amen? We are all part of God's family. And I believe that Jesus, through these parables that we've been studying in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 24 and 25, and specifically with this concluding statement on his teaching, he's telling us what he would like to see his people do in these last days, to care for one another. Amen? And this can start at home. Amen? Start at home to care for one another. And this could be here at church. Amen? But we should also care for those in our community. Amen? And in this way, reflect that we are his sheep who follow the good shepherd. Amen. We could stand for our closing hymn, number 545, Savior Like a Shepherd, Lead Us. Number 545. Savior, like a shepherd, lead us, much we must care in thy pleasant pastures. Oh. Uh-huh.
us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, what a privilege we have to know Jesus and to know that he is our good shepherd who wants to protect us, who wants to guide us, who wants to cleanse us, who wants to forgive us. And Father, today our church family rejoices in knowing that Alicia has made this decision publicly through baptism to be a follower of Jesus. And Father, we ask that your Holy Spirit will be poured down in a special way upon her. And I also ask, Father, that your Holy Spirit will be poured down in a special way upon each one of us today, that we may know your paths, your righteous paths, that we might know where there is a need and help, where we may know, Father, what to do in these last days and be a part of this beautiful family that is preparing to meet their King. So we thank you again for what you are doing in each one of our lives, and we ask your blessing in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you.